My name is Teresa Gillarducci, and I'm the chair of the Bernard Schwartz Economic Policy Center at the New School for Social Research, where I also teach economics. I've just published a book called When I'm 64, The Plot Against Pensions and the Plan to Save Them. And in that book, I talk about my plan for a mandatory, universal pension system that will supplement our social security system. I worked on this plan with my colleagues at the Economic Policy Institute in Washington, D.C., and I'd like to talk a little bit about that plan. Most people have heard that our retirement income security system is built um, as if it were a three-legged stool, where income comes from Social Security, from employer-based pensions, and from personal wealth. Well, that image implies that there are equal sources of income come from, coming from each of those sources um, for all retired families. And that image is just plain wrong for most people. Over 80% of retirees get most of their, um, so their income for in retirement from Social Security. Um, only about half of workers are covered by employer uh, plan at work, at, at work, and only the top 10% have any kind of assets that they can really draw down for retirement. So for most of this country, uh, for most people in this country, a retirement income security system really looks like a pyramid. So think of the food pyramid, where you have your grains and vegetables on the bottom, where you have fruits and meat in the middle, and you have your whiskey and um, chocolate at the very tippy top. Well, that analogy, um, used in the retirement system really would mean that our social security is on the bottom. Supplementing that is, is pensions from work. And on the very top of that for a few people are the, the kinds of assets we've managed to save for our retirement. And, it, and when we talk about our retirement income security crisis, we're really not talking about what's happening with social security and Medicare, even though there's problems in that system. It's the top two layers that are really crumbling. I'm talking right now um, in the second quarter of 2009, in April 2009, and we are in one of the worst um, depressions that this country has seen since the Great Depression of 1930. In fact, the numbers show that it's the 1930s depressions are the only rivals to the ones that we are now in 2009. What's similar also to those um, two depressions is that just like the last one, this one is causing older workers and retired workers' retirement dreams to crumble. The last recession we had, um, pensions um, crumbled, old people were thrown into poverty, and we created Social Security. I argue that in this recession, in this period of time, we have to rethink our retirement system. And I propose a mandatory universal pension system on top of Social Security. Um, now, President Obama has also responded to the retirement crisis. Tens of millions of people right now have lost over $2 trillion in their pension system. Many of these people um, are older people, and they are looking at a stock market and a bond market where they'll never recover um, their lost wealth. They are looking at a permanent decline of living standards for the rest of their life. So President Obama has, um, as our president, responded to this crisis by proposing a universal 401k type arrangement. And I find this, and many of my colleagues find this proposal inappropriate when millions of people are underwater precisely because of the 401k system. Let me tell you a little bit about the 401k plan and where it came from. In 1978, Congress, Congress responded um, to lobbyists from some big firms who wanted a tax shelter for their executives. The executives wanted to save money in a tax-free account in an account that would be set up at work, and they wanted to put tax-free money in it. The revenue um, agency, the Internal Revenue Service, said, this looks like a tax dodge to me, but go ahead if you will allow all workers to be in that plan. They said fine, knowing that most um, workers would not contribute um, an extra amount of money for their retirement, that only their higher income people do. Well, the change became Section K of Section 401 in the tax code. 
over time, companies have expanded um, participation in those, in those plans at the expense of traditional defined benefit plans. So for half of the workforce that have a pension plan, most of them have this kind of plan, the 401k plan, that was really designed for executives. It was never meant to be the third tier of the second tier of retirement support um, for most uh, most Americans. Now, the average 401k, as I'm speaking today, has fallen by 25% in just six months. Obama's plan calls for employers without a pension plan to put 3% of their workers' pay in a 401k type account. These are commercial, individually directed accounts. And under Obama's plan, they will be voluntary. His plan is this. For households earning under $65,000 a year, the federal government will match those, those contributions up to $1,000 a year with a 50% tax credit. The president's presidential advisors say that this is a progressive credit um, and it might be able to increase the savings rate for low and middle income workers. The idea is that if you're a low and middle income worker and you get automatically put into these systems, even though you could take your money out, you may be induced to stay in those accounts because the government will give you um, up to $1,000 to stay in them. Well, that's a theory. It may actually mean that people save more for the retirement, or it actually may not. We now see that people have good intentions to save for their retirement, but when a kid goes to college, or there's an illness in the family, or there's a job loss, or even a job change, people tend to take that money out before they retire. And there's nothing about Obama's plan that would prevent that from happening. There's also a pro problems with his plan is that it does not actually fix the worst flaws in the 401k system. And the flaws are this. 3% of pay is not enough for people to supplement their Social Security. If people want to maintain their standard of living for the rest of their life, and they're in the middle class or, or above income brackets, you're going, we're going to have to save 7 to almost 20% of our income, depending upon family circumstances. So 3% isn't enough. And when people voluntarily have to save, they tend to not save much more than that. Um, people also tend, as I said, to spend their retirement accounts before they retire. Um, and that makes these already too small accounts even smaller. Also, these accounts are managed by for-profit mutual fund um, brokers. Um, Charles Schwab, um, Vanguard, Fidelity, these are all commercial accounts um, that, want, that actually charge you a hefty brokerage fee, a hefty management fee uh, for your retirement accounts. So your accounts are already small because people have taken money away from them, they haven't put enough in them. They're also made small because these fees are quite large, they're also quite hidden. So many people don't realize that the fees they pay to maintain their 401k account can over time erode that account by 20 to 30 percent. Also, if someone has actually saved enough, managed to keep the fees low, not withdrawn money um, when they needed it before they retire. They have an, these accounts have another flaw that when people come to the point of retirement, they tend to take the money out in a lump sum. And when they take the money out in a lump sum, they often spend money for vacations, remodeling, moving, and that erodes the money that they spend when they're 65 and erodes the amount of money they need when they're 85. Um, the other problem with 401k um, accounts is that they are financial assets that a worker must manage on their own. Most people don't have um, the training to manage their money on their own. And even if they did have the training, we've seen from uh, financial manager, uh, managers who are professionals that they make similar mistakes, which is they get optimistic during expansions and very pessimistic during a, a, a downturn. So individuals who aren't pros and even the pros make the mistake of actually overvaluing assets and buying a lot of assets when the prices are high by historical standards. And they tend to sell their assets when prices are low by historical standards. So most people 
buy high and sell low, which is the opposite of what folks should do. The other problem that can't be solved by good intentions or good education about finances is that people can't time when they're old. They're born when they're born and they turn 65 when they turn 65. And, that, and if that happens to be at a time when the financial markets are down, there's absolutely nothing an individual can do about. So what Obama plan, Obama's plan for a universal 401k system does, in a nutshell, is to expand the commercial volunteer, voluntary individual account system. And there's nothing wrong with that system except that it's voluntary, it's commercial, and it's directed by individuals. That's a little bit of a joke, but it does point to the fact that the 401k system um, is an experiment that's failed and that when we look to pension reform, we have to go beyond the 401k um, promise and hope. So in early March of March of 2009, an organization called Retirement USA, which is a group of pension advocates, worker representatives, um, and other academics who are really interested in a comprehensive pension reform, came out with a couple of principles that any reform should follow. They felt that we should no longer have a system where only 50% of, of the workforce has a supplement to Social Security, that pensions should be universal. They should be mandated. It's the only way you can make everybody have a pension. And also the pension plans should be structured so that people have retirement income for the rest of their life. Also a pension plan should have the employees and the employers contribute because we have to get beyond a 3% um, contribution rate. The government should also be helping people who need the help the most. We should not have tax breaks that go for retirement savings, that go to people in the very top bracket. It doesn't make any sense. If the government is going to lay out money to help people accumulate uh, retirement funds, they should do it for lower income and middle income groups. The other principle they had is that retirement contributions should be pooled and professionally managed. That you shouldn't have x-ray technicians be expected to time the market, structure an asset um, portfolio that meets her or his needs. That's not what x-ray technicians should do. They should be paying attention to their jobs as English professors um, and, and others of us who go off in our work to do our trained task um, should not have to add another profession onto our lives in order just to have retirement. So retirement contributions should be pooled and professionally managed. That's another principle of Retirement USA. This minimizes costs and it also smooths out financial risk. Now the Obama plan does not include any of these principles. In fact, the Obama plan really only helps one identifiable group and that is the mutual fund industry. They have gotten most of their profits on the retail brokerage side in the last 10, 15 years from the expansion of the 401k system. They make a lot of money from these very high fees in 401k accounts. They are very worried, the, the Wall Street mutual fund part of the industry, part of Wall Street, are very worried about their future, as they should be. And Obama's plan falls right into their laps. Millions and millions of other of people will have these retirement accounts, and they really are encouraging the Obama administration to propose this. Obama is not the only entity that is looking at what a retirement reform um, system should look like um, in, in detail. In the last two years, myself and two other academics working alone, we haven't been working independently, we're quite sort of pleased to find out that we've come to the same conclusion um, have come to the conclusion that we need a mandatory um, system. John Foreman at the University of Oklahoma, working with Adam Caruso at the Urban Institute, um, have proposed one mandatory universal pension system. Professor, Professor Alicia Manel at Boston College um, has also proposed a version of a mandatory pension system. And myself, working with, as I've said, the Economic Policy Institute and the Rockefeller Foundation, um, have a specific proposal, and that's what I'd like to describe. That proposal um, is a guaranteed retirement account plan where all workers uh, would contribute 5% of their pay every pay period. 
One version of my plan has employers contributing half of that amount. So an employer would contribute 2.5% and a worker would contribute 2.5%. Now many workers can't afford to take 2.5% off their paycheck um, or even 5% off their paycheck. They just don't make enough money to get by. So I propose that the government give $600 to everybody um, who has a guaranteed retirement account every year. That would be indexed for inflation. And I'll talk about how I would pay for that in, in a minute. So low-income workers, their contributions would be offset by the $600 refundable um, tax credit. And that would be given, again, to repeat myself, to everybody, regardless of income. Now the contributions would be pooled in a quasi-government agency. This would be a not-for-profit agency that would professionally run the money. It would be governed by a set of publicly accountable trustees appointed by Congress and the President, and they would be responsible for hiring money managers to manage this money. They would make sure that the fees are low and that the managers are the best managers um, possible. Um, they would manage the money, and the worker would um, have retirement credits built up um, depending upon the amount of money in their accounts. When the worker retires, they would be able to supplement their um, Social Security money um, or their other pension money with distributions from this account. And that the distributions from this account would be paid for for the rest of a person's life. Um, this would mean that we would bypass the commercial um, sector on the individual, on the retail basis, but the Wall Street firms and the, and the world's money managers would still have a responsibility. We would still need them to help invest this money. Under the Guaranteed Retirement Account Plan, retirees will never outlive their savings. Since the returns to their contributions would be indexed to inflation, um, then they would never lose money because inflation erodes their accounts. Their contributions, our contributions to a guaranteed retirement account, would be credited with a 3% return plus inflation. So if inflation returns to its normal course of about 3% a year, people would get a guaranteed amount of, um, of 6%. You know, 3% is the base amount and then whatever inflation is. Right now, just to give a perspective, pension plans um, have been losing 25%. The last month they lost 2%. So you would actually not have spectacular double-digit returns, but every single year the returns would be positive and indexed for inflation. Um, in closing, I'd like to talk about how I would pay for the $600 credit. Right now, the federal government subsidizes the 401k system um, that is crumbling um, um, in front of us. The 401k system is a voluntary system where high, mostly high-income people save at work. To be sure, a lot of middle-income people have 401ks, but the bulk of the assets, the real juicy-sized as, um, accounts, are really concentrated in the top income tiers. The federal government exempts the contributions made into 401ks from tax and exempts the earnings from those um, from those contributions exempted from tax. Now when people are in a lower tax bracket usually, when they retire, they'll have to pay some tax on that income, but that's spread out over a long period of time and it is at a lower tax bracket. So there is a tax break that contributors to 401ks get now, and it's one of the fastest growing tax breaks in our federal system. Now it's hidden, Congress doesn't debate it every year, it just grows as the um, system grows. Now that has led to last year the tax, the Treasury being denied $110 billion a year because they give tax breaks to 401k contributions. 76% of that $110 billion goes to the top 20% of all taxpayers. That means someone making $20,000 per year gets nothing from that tax break because they don't even pay income taxes, where somebody making $200,000 a year can get up to $7,000 in, in a subsidy, in a grant from the federal government. And that really doesn't make any sense. 
So in one version of my plan, if we didn't want to make this plan cost one cent from the federal government, is that we could rearrange those tax breaks and instead of giving a tax deduction, we could get a tax credit to everybody regardless of income. As I said before, as I am speaking now in April 2009, uh, we are in the worst recession since the Great Depression. And just like that depression, we need to count on Congress and the President um, to construct a retirement reform that, that truly supplements Social Security so that all people, no matter what kind of occupation they have or what kind of income group they, have, they, they are in, have access to a secure retirement income for the rest of their lives. Thanks.